we got an election coming up, and here's some news from Tulsi Gabbard's campaign. Now, this is interesting. This video is surfacing this morning. Uh, we'll watch it straight from Tulsi's Twitter. Let me back it up here and get it ready for y'all. And uh, Edwin shares this. Edwin, thank you for sharing this. So Tulsi Gabbard is considering boycotting uh, the next debate. The next debate is coming up. It's on Tuesday, October 15th. Tulsi Gabbard did not make the third debate. She did make this debate. Now, unfortunately, I guess it's it's kind of good and bad because they were going to break the debate into two nights. And the concern when that happens is that they're going to keep certain candidates off the stage when other candidates are on the stage. You know, like like they're going to try to make sure like I remember in the first debate, you know, they made sure that that Warren and, and Bernie were not on the stage at the same time because they wanted her, uh, you know, to look like this alternative to Bernie or that she's also a progressive. Um, but the other side of it is they're 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 doing it all in one night. So there's going to be 12 candidates on the stage with 12 candidates on the stage. It's going to be very hard to manage. And our debates. I mean, they're they're a shit show. There's no way to put it delicately. Um, they are political theater. They are uh, an embarrassment to the democratic process. They have been for a long time now. They are cable news's last ditch effort at maintaining relevancy. That's why they try to make presidential debates private property. They won't let people stream them. They won't let them be accessible to the public because they want them to be their property. They want to have their Super Bowl moment as far as ratings are concerned and get a huge spike for their ratings when they have these debates. This is not uh, conducive to news and information. This is not conducive to democracy. And this shouldn't be legal. The media structure we have in the United States should be illegal. There should be laws protecting citizens from this abortion of a new structure that we have in this country. And Tulsi Gabbard's pointing out some of that. All right, so Tulsi Gabbard's considering boycotting. Here's what she has to say. Thank all of you so much for your support. I need to share something with you that's very important. There are so many of you who I've had the opportunity to meet in Iowa and New Hampshire who've expressed to me how frustrated you are that the DNC and the corporate media are essentially trying to usurp your role as voters in choosing who our Democratic nominee will be. Which they did in 2016. Yep. 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 So it was also against the American people the first time. Just just a small, <laughs> small, small like uh, observation. It was still against the American people the first time because the American people wanted Bernie Sanders. And we're denied that. But uh, but I see what she's saying. All right, let's continue. They're attempting to replace the roles of voters in the early states using polling and other arbitrary methods, which are not transparent or democratic. They're holding so-called debates, which really are not debates at all, but rather commercialized reality television meant to entertain rather than to inform or enlighten. So in short, the DNC and the corporate media are trying to hijack the entire election process. So in order to bring attention to the serious threat to our democracy and to ensure that your voice is heard, I'm seriously considering boycotting the next debate on October 15th. I'm going to announce my decision within the next few days. I just want to say with my deepest and warmest aloha, thank you all again for your support. So, um... All the points that she raises, I completely agree with. Um, and everything she raised, this is nothing new. Like, like, it's not like, oh, all of a sudden the DNC started being corrupt in 2016. No, the DNC has been corrupt for a long time. The corporate media has been corrupt for a long time. Uh, our corporate media structure has no business being in news and information. You look at our cable networks, Comcast has no business being in news and information. Time Warner has no business being in news and information. Rupert Murdoch has no business being in news and information. And that's who runs our media. 
even over on the public side of it. NPR gets funding from the Koch brothers. Our media structure, again, there should be policies and laws in place so that this isn't legal. Other countries, they do have laws. They do have laws related to who can advertise on news and information or if there's advertising at all. In a lot of cases, news and information is completely commercial free, which is the way it ought to be. It ought to be funded and properly funded by government agencies to ensure a free and democratic press, not to just have a completely deregulated corporate takeover of news and information, because then you get propaganda for the elite, which is what our news structure is. It is propaganda for the elite. We do not have news organizations. We have PR organizations. Tulsi knows this and she's pointing it out. Now, so again, I agree with all the points she's raising. I disagree with the idea of boycotting the debate if you are her. And I hope she chooses not to boycott the debate. I think the most useful thing she could do is beyond that debate stage. Because here's, I mean, Tulsi Gabbard is not, you know, like an activist in this sense. She's not uh, a media activist. She's a candidate. She's in electoral politics. That's the side of the fence that she is on. That's the side of the fence that Bernie Sanders is on. That's the side of the fence Liz Warren is on. And when you're an official and you boycott something in this, for instance, you're not reaching any new people. You're not converting anybody or turning people on to your ideas or your messages. You're just kind of preaching to the choir of people who already uh, agree with the issues you're raising. I agree with all the issues she raised. I agree with everything she said in that statement. I certainly disagree with the idea of her boycotting the debate. I think that'd be the wrong thing to do. Just like I think it's wrong for Liz Warren to say she's not going to go on Fox News. It's a similar premise. Um, Fox News is terrible. It shouldn't be able to exist the way it does in our media structure. Um, it's not a news outlet at all. That being said, unfortunately, this is the media structure we have. And if you're a politician, you can't just ignore a major news outlet. Similarly, if you and, and Tulsi Gabbard, yeah, these debates are circuses. But Tulsi Gabbard is one of the is one of the people up there who has had a few good speaking moments, who had a great moment with Kamala Harris, where she, you know, I mean, that was beautiful. <laughs> So I think it's very, the idea of her boycotting the debates, I find to be very counterproductive. Um, I think in that case, you're not proving anything. I, I think that elected officials, that's not a good course of action for them. A better course of action would be to go on the debate stage and raise that issue. Raise it in your opening and closing statement. Be like, hey, you know what? It's BS that this is considered the private property of some for-profit corporate news entity. And it's BS that there's 12 of us on this stage and you have these ridiculous rules. But let's be honest, some people get more mic time than others. Some people, Kamala Harris, they will never cut her off. Liz Warren, they will never cut her off. Andrew Yang, I, I mean, it's unbelievable how little speaking time they gave that guy. And, and then people hijacked Yang's time and they did nothing about it. Like, like there were times where Yang's time was hijacked. And, and keep on, I don't agree with Andrew Yang on a lot. Like, I, like, I'm not, I, I mean, I, I don't want to see him be the nominee. I disagree with him on a lot. I agree with him on some. He does have some cool ideas too, but he has a lot of ideas that I strongly disagree with. But nonetheless, he should be up there. He should be given a fair shot and he should be able to express his ideas. People hijacked his time. Nothing was done about it. Nothing. The moderators just sat there. So they got their favorites and it's a circus. But someone like a Tulsi Gabbard, the energy would be better spent being on that debate stage and trying to get that word in edgewise versus not being on that debate stage. So I sincerely hope Tulsi does not uh, boycott the debates. And, and I think it's, um, I mean, all the issues she raises are important issues, but to then say I might boycott the debates. Well, I disagree with that. I, I don't think that's the way to go at all. And I hope she goes, uh, I hope she decides not to boycott the debate and instead raises that issue at the debate. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. 
Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah.